we, we, we talked about education earlier, right? And you talked about, Josh, you talked about um, sort of jumping at the chance to be in the role, right? Um, but then you actually have to do the job, right? Um, I think for a lot of people, how to do that job effectively is not necessarily um, uh, as intuitive as, you know, cleaning a, cleaning a, a part, you know, or something like that. Um, as far as, as far as, um, like looking back on it, what are the really valuable skill sets that you need to really do the job that you do, you know, in terms of like, yeah, putting, that's, putting it all together. That's, some, and, that's and something I was going to ask. You, you took over the director job at what, 25 years old. What is some good advice that you would give somebody that wants to, that wants to, or is jumping into a role of like, what you do, you know, the, um, mm -hmm. the, I can't think of the program director, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it is really about surrounding yourself with those, those people, um, that, that can both help you in the teaching part of it and the design part of it. Um, I also have a, you know, admin team as well um, that is able to, it's, it's me and another person. I, I wouldn't, <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like it's a, <laughs> a lot of person. It's on, a lot of on, on, on the Mystique campus, you know, the, the Music City Mystique <laughs> yeah. campus, yeah. yeah. The office building, yeah. 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 The, uh, that would be awesome if we had a, a place. And we, it's something we always talk about is just like, we win the lottery, like you said, uh, I'm going to build a, you know, big wing for everybody here in the area. Um, but yeah, at, being able to surround yourself with people that they can help you uh, and just knowing the timeline. Like for me, like I know when to order the buses, I know when to, to call for the work, for the uniforms or whatever. It, it's a, it's a internal ticking clock for me, but it's not necessarily for everybody. And um, I'm not as far as uh, I'm not a computer person, I'm not even terribly organized person. I, I'm very good at organizing mystique stuff. Um, and so um, it, I don't know if, it, if it's just haven't done it for so long or, um, but I, I could not do this by myself. And that I probably have at, at minimum 15 people there with us every weekend. They're just helping um, facilitate both the educational side and or the logistic side. Um, and you got to have people that are selfless enough to want to be the person who deals with the, with the uniform stuff and the, with the merch stuff or with the dealing with the, the parent group or any of that kind of thing. It's the least, the less glamorous part of versus like cleaning some flam drags or um, doing that stuff. Cause I think that that stuff probably does come more second nature for a lot of people. Um, but it's, um, you can't let the kids down for the weekend, right? For, for WJ, like you, you gotta have all the things taken care of. If you needed to have heads or sticks, like they need to be there. If you, you can't have the, the, the show being held up or the, the learning part of it held up because of the, the other stuff, the logistics or the admin. Do you ever have, to, do you ever have to get, I hate to ask, but do you ever have to get pushy with vendors that to make sure that you're not getting taken for granted? Like your timelines that you need to, that, 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 you know, you need to stay on. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and the good part is for us, two of our main vendors are right here in town. So Pearl and innovative are right here. So if we need something we're able to, we have chances are we have people on staff that also work there. So there's, there's, there's some ease to that, but like, um, uniforms or any, anything else we you have to stay on top of it and you have to be able to, to check in on those things but now it's a little different though right with all the supply chain and so it, I like to think I have my act together but we'll see if um, if some of that stuff doesn't slow us down but you try to you try to make it as as foolproof as possible and the earlier you can have stuff done the better for any I've heard the supply supply chain issues are like a big thing right now as oh, far yeah. as uh, equipment wise for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. 
and you know being in the position that we're in where i think we're a little quicker to be taken care of than than maybe some some groups that are um just lower on the on the chain there but um we're gonna keep doing what we can to, to make sure we stay <laughs> um stable. we uh i feel like we forgot to ask but during this whole time you've been with mystique staff wise uh and then sort of previous to coming on coming on to Colts. Did you do any other drum corps teaching along the way? Yeah, I did a little bit at the time at Blue Knights. I had a couple stints there after one after I aged out and then one in uh, 12 and 13, um, both on, when Ralph was in charge of the program. Um, and then uh, I did some scouts in 17 and 18. And then back over to Colts there, 19. And are you, are you um, besides uh, besides Colts and Mystique, um, are you working with any other groups now? Uh, yeah, I teach at uh, Mount Juliet High School um, here in the area. And then, um, then my college gig that I do is just for March of Man. We do uh, Cumberland University, just right outside of town here. Um, but no, I because i do i'm so i'm so focused on these couple groups i don't end up get, getting a bunch of other groups um and i i think that's a benefit to my groups typically to where I, i'm not having to spread myself thin I, and i and i just i'm able to do that where I, i'm not trying to i don't write a lot and so i'm really just kind of a tactician i'm just trying to take care of these these details um, and produce this show, whatever whatever group I'm with. Um, so it's I have my own lane most of the time, which is nice. <laughs> Not a lot of people want to do that, but um, it's a it's part of it. You're, you're you're like you're like the five star general that surveys the battlefield and sees the big picture and. And and send your troops off to take care of what needs to get taken care of. Absolutely. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Go well, go ahead. Go ahead, Josh. Yeah, I'm not afraid to get in there and teach a, a sectional block or any of that kind of stuff. I, I try not to. I try to keep kind of my ears for ensemble, just that way I'm not worrying about a particular eighth note or something else like that. Um, and I'm, I have the benefit of having a staff big enough to where I don't have to do that, where I think a lot of, a lot of teams are just smaller just by nature to where they're you're stretching a lot of people really thin. And I even even the people I have, having so many, I, I'm, we're really stretching a lot of these people thin. And and see, that's awesome. You're not afraid to lead from the front. Get in there and, you know, get your hands dirty and, and, and do the work that needs to get done if you don't hear something right. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for me, like, I'm, I'm the first person there and the last one to lead most of the time. And I'm the one that gets the food for the kids. So that I have a, I'm able to have a, just a, a different relationship as far as just holding them accountable. They're they're more likely to listen to me just because they they see me helping out yeah. cleaning the school at the end of the day or whatever it may be. It's part of just being selfless and being ready to to do what it takes. Um, you know, everybody's everybody's different, I think. But yeah, well, you, I mean that 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 is absolutely true in that um, for all the the sort of variety of different things you can do in this activity as a staff person um it helps when your your personality or however you however you're wired uh naturally you know uh uh works in that position you know and it sounds like it sounds like a lot of it for you um comes a little bit more organically like you're you're self-motivated to be that person you know for your groups i, th I think for me mostly it's I had a transformative experience doing this. And so I, you know, I think everybody's trying to give back on their, on their level. But for me, it was, uh, it just gave me a place to belong. It gave me a, gave me an identity of something that I'm, that I was good at. And, um, you know, no matter what you're doing, it's nice to be around people who are like-minded and are trying to be great at whatever they're doing. Um, you just don't always have that opportunity to, to have that kind of focus for the, you know, if he worked at a regular, a regular job, it would be weird to be working on my off time and, you know, like 
you know, planning for the, for the day if I was just like a regular nine to five or, but I can see the benefit of the extra work, you know, most of the time, just cause it's, it makes it smoother for the staff. It makes it smoother for the kids or, uh, that's ultimately the goal. Yeah. It's, it's a love of the activity and your help shaping these young minds, you know, mm-hmm. that are eventually going to go on and one or two of them are going to have that same love of the activity, if not more. And down the line, they're going to do the same thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, like you said before, you have a, you have a little bit of a, a coaching tree now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's cool for me to see, I, I'm sure I'll be able to sit back and have perspective on it one day, but just to see all the guys that I've taught for as my team and I, and I can hold them more accountable at that point too, because I am their coach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we're, we're super excited to see, uh, I mean, the wheel never stops, right? We're already, we're already think we're already talking about next season and stuff like that, but, but that, you know, with Colts continuing on the upward trajectory, continuing, continuing Tr- to grow, trending up, that's, trending up. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously I'm very personally excited to see what Mystique's going to do this year, you know, um, with regards to the production, um, and you know, and all of that. So, yeah, I, I, I just have a couple more things. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Go ahead. For the first thing I wanted to ask you was about the Colts and and I don't know maybe if, if you'd want to talk about this or not but like as someone who's been in a, a lower tier drum corps but in a good drum line was it I'm trying to think of the right way to word this was it ever frustrating to you like you go to some of these smaller shows and you're taking out these bigger name cores that you probably have never taken the core overall has not taken out before drumline wise and then you get to a regional and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you get knocked I know what you're saying. Yeah. back down was that frustrating to you at all like for me being a, a member in my era we would go out at, at these shows and, and we'd, w- we'd win drums as a drumline mm-hmm. against these bigger groups but then we get to like I hate to say it like a DCI you know big show and we're psh- Knocked Your ordinal all yes. of a sudden drops, yes. the spread gets big, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, term, the term is slotted. Yes. Is yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is frustrating um, to where, you know, we're, you're getting feedback from what you feel are the top quality judges, and they're, they're putting you in the mix um, against those groups. And then for us this year, we were uh, – we were still go for the up until San Antonio. We go. We went off of the 2019 placements. So you draw within like a three core thing. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> you know that was up until I think those last three shows before San Antonio determined it. But so we were going on way earlier than them. Sometimes hours um, or an hour or so. So is it frustrating? Definitely, because you know like. Like you said, we were we were trending a different way, and then when you get to those some of those bigger shows where everybody's there, everybody's the same ordinals are across the board. Yeah. Right? Even though you like the night before, you would just by a wide margin. We were, I mean, and, and it's, it's funny because we were talking about it, um, like it just in our sort of like little group chat and stuff, like looking at the scores going what's happening down in sort of like this part of the uh, of the placements is actually way more interesting. You know, yeah. that that sort of group that, that that you guys were in, like with like you and Stars and Phantom Regiment and like who else was it ever in there? Like Troopers, like that was like it's like David and Goliath, you know. But yeah. but it, but, he, but even just still, like it kind of it didn't feel like slotting, essentially, because the placements were a little bit different all the time, and it felt a little bit more like, wait a minute, is this actually like really merit based? Like you got you guys yeah. had like that puncher's chance of 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 out kicking your coverage as far as mm-hmm. drumline wise, and then all of a sudden, back down. Nope, right. We can't let you do it. No, I am. And sometimes it was some similar people doing that to us. Um, but you know, I think we were consistent. <laughs> I will say, like, I don't think we had just went out there and just had like wildly good shows and wildly bad shows. Like there was some consistency to it. Um, but no, to answer your initial question, is it frustrating? Definitely. And I think that's, um, we were, we were able to kind of pull out of that, but there was, there was a different trajectory at first 
and then um, when you keep getting better, um, we were lucky that our our overall score went up almost the entire summer. Where you know sometimes you hit that slide back where it's like, oh man, we've been rehearsing, but our score keeps going down. <laughs> um, but that didn't happen to us. You know, once you get to, in the drum score land, once you get to that 17, getting to 18 is very difficult. And then getting to 19 is, well, you gotta be, you gotta be pretty dang good to even start sniffing that. Um, so we did end up getting there to 18 there by the end. Um, I think our highest score was 18.3. Um, but it's, uh, I guess it's part, all part of the journey. It's, I think it's tough for the kids. We didn't, we don't, we don't talk numbers necessarily. We're talk we just talk about how the show went and what can be better for the most part, but they look at it and we look at it and we pretend like we don't look at it, but, um, yeah, I mean, but, but is there any, any sort of like active management of, of keeping the, the kids more focused on what they should be focused on and on more on an even I think, yeah, and I think there's always those things like, you know, we, we still had ourselves on this part of the show, you know, or yeah. we can definitely still play this better than we, than we did at that, at that moment or whatever. So I think there's, there's, there's relatable things to them to where like, if you want to, you know, if we were playing our very, very best and we were just smoking the show every single time and you're still, your score is creeping along, I'd be more worried with that. To where we we had moments early on of great clarity. Like we weren't able to sustain it early, you know, I think that was what we were getting credit for, especially mm -hmm. in those early shows where we had moments that we were very, very good. So they they had those glimpses where I think that um, you can just kind of see where we're going with it. Um, but it's, Any um, any interesting stories from critique? Do you have any interesting critiques uh, over over these last, that you that you can talk about? No, <laughs> I, I think that um, in having done this for this much time, I I'm able to have some personal relationships where I've, I've talked with somebody before, um, but I can tell you that we did not storm out of any critiques this summer. But we were not. That was not the truth. From other people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um and, and and we took a little bit of we enjoyed that a little bit to where you could tell people being worked up about the cults being them yeah um, and that's just what it is and that's fan so, to me that's fantastic that's the know? best yeah yeah you know well we could we, that we were kind of under their skin a little bit and uh, that uh <laughs> it was a, a personal kick to it i guess but um yeah, yeah, it's that 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 underlying smirk that you really can't let out, but that you kind of want to. Yeah, and it, and you know, and everybody back home, all the designers, everybody texting you, just kind of gassing you up about it. Um, but then you have those other moments where, like you said, where you you feel like you 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 killed the show, and then it's like you weren't getting credit for yeah. it. So yeah, I think I, I think overall the judging this 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 summer, it felt like it was better I mean, and they also haven't done it for two years there hasn't right. they haven't had the reps um to to give the feedback at that level um and there were some different judges i mean or or let's say uh different judges that were getting more opportunities yeah and i think you have to be you kind of have to be somebody or be a little bit brave if you want to give that group that's not necessarily a perennial a better score than somebody who is um and we were when that first started happening from some of those more quality judges um or i probably shouldn't say that like that more exp more experienced judges um i think that gave leeway to to the other ones that were justification like yes that's okay there's permission there yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah having been through this first year back competitively judging wise is there anything you'd want to see done different just a more consistency of who, what judges are going to be there. And um, COVID kind of messed them up for a bunch at times where we would have seven judges instead of eight or mm. um, a double one guy, one person score. And yeah, Jay missing. Jay missing. Yeah, Jay missing. Jay missing is the, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I thought, yeah. 
At first, I thought that was a person. Yeah, 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 same. same. Totally, yeah, totally, yeah. yeah. Who's this Jay missing person? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, just more of a consistency as far as... Because um, I, I don't know how they're, they're, you know, going about getting their reads. Some people, like, they, you listen to them on the tape, and they, they know all the... You give them, them all the source material already. You have a write-up on the show. Like, they've done their homework. It's really clear. And then not always that case from, from everybody. Um, and there's, you know, I think they're in a, probably in a, in a decent cycle of, of getting some of the newer people in and some people are kind of wrapping up their careers, just like it is any, any year of drum corps. But um, there should be a lot of people that are qualified to do this, to, to judge. And there are at least people that you can get them, start getting them in the fold. Um, so you can just have a more consistency to your approach as a, you know, as an organization, as a judging organization. I think WGI does a better job of just keeping everybody engaged and in, in what to look for and, yeah. and maybe just kind of coaching them to be better. Would you like their- to see, would you like to see two judges at like regionals for DCI? Because that's something we talk about amongst ourselves. But I'm curious, you being a caption head. Well, at the one point, in the they had the upstairs percussion judge. You remember? Yep. They yep. used to do this. Um, I don't know. I think it's tough for a judge to be down there judging the pit, and the, we're blasting those speakers. Like those are big arenas we're playing in. So, like, for the for the judges to be able to get a great sample of of everything is. It's tougher, and, and like we talked about at the very beginning, just um, giving those design windows for for your for your percussion. I think it's going to help with some of that as people learn how to kind of work within that system of the judges only going to take a couple steps out there. Um, but I don't know if I would if I want to or not. Two judges, um, it'd be interesting. If they had the if they had the the roster, then I think it would be awesome. If everything was a double panel, every single caption, yeah, it would make those caption awards real interesting at the end, at least. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I I just have one more one more question. I've been kind of curious about the mystique vibe in the lot. I I don't know, like, and and this isn't me like having witnessed it personally, but there's this aura like. You guys are unapproachable, you know, mystique. They won't talk to anybody. Is is that do you? Is that something you you realize on your end, or you you have no idea about that? We're fairly aware of it, and it's more so that uh, you're putting so much work and effort into this, and like now is not the time to be doing something different and to be high fiving and taking pictures and um, and there's I guess there's time for everything, but. Um, some of it is is a majority of that is student led. I think that just because they've done it with a group before, where they weren't the leader, and the leader said this, and um, so they have that similar. And it's you know some years that they're, they're more within the character of the show as they're doing that, but it's it's more so about just having a good focus and um, making sure the culmination of your season is going to go exactly how you want it to go, and you're not going to be distracted or forget to to do this because you were out of your routine um i think it's probably similar you know when drum corps show up they're not they're not hanging out with with fans or anything else like that or or talking to people they're they're there to do business and then after the show they have that opportunity so is this vibe something that started like a certain year or it just has grown like kind of homegrown throughout the mystique era not era, that's a bad word, but yeah, through the, the timeline. It's probably ramped up a little bit more. And, and now that we have just more stuff, most of the time we have more instruments and more things to put together. We really need everybody there to do all those things, to get everything off there, get it all queued up and, and ready for the show. And so just the the, the more responsibilities have, that have grown, you have to, you got to have your logistics on point. And if you know, if you have, if you don't have a lot of things to worry about, you can do less things. But for me, I'm, we're we're there to do business, and 
typically that's what what you see um, to where it's just we spend too much time getting ready for that to, to be out of our out of our element absolutely yeah that's that's it for me george you got okay. anything else no um you know josh this is really great we really appreciated you giving us okay, the glimpse both both into your groups and into you as a as a person because um i think that like you know like i said before um the view that people have of groups is a certain thing right it's like videos of the lot video, videos of a performance but um we all know that a whole lot needs to happen there's a whole lot of people that need to put in a lot of really good work in order to create that you know and uh i appreciate you giving us a tiny little little glimpse into that yeah yeah especially during this like dci just finished and now within a, a couple of weeks you're right back at it with mystique you know we appreciate your time and you know we mm-hmm. thank you for hanging out here with us absolutely yeah as a, as a shameless plug here both of my groups audition materials both for colts and for mystique is available but there's people of age and uh, don't count yourself out i think for the most part that uh, yeah do you have any advice for for people coming out to audition i feel like that happens where you 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 see all these whether or not you have a lot of experience or just a little bit of experience and you you're on those audition pages that it, probably every group has and you see talented people and you think ah, i can't do this that's not that's probably not true like you'd be surprised of how many people that actually try out at mystique um versus the, the amount of people we field it's they don't have an overwhelming you know turnout typically so there's you have a great chance to do it i think with with all groups you put yourself out there you show up prepared and start investing yourself in the process i think that people notice that and um shouldn't count yourself out until you give it a whirl yeah because because who knows um who knows if as a prospective member if your perspective on what you think you need to be showing reconciles with what the staff is actually looking for you know? And I think for a lot of people, just having that, even going through the audition process, you learn so quickly and it, you maybe didn't have access to whatever specific in, uh, information that you're, that you're needing to showcase, but you, you, you learn it, you work on it, and you can show that progress. I think that's big for anybody doing an audition. You see that, that, that growth within just that small time. That's, that's a good sign. So I think that's uh can't count that out as a, as a quality. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely don't want people self cutting themselves. I mean, nope. yeah, yeah, that's, that's been going on for years and it's like, man, if, if you only knew just show up and just keep showing up and more than likely there, there, there'll be a place for you, you right. know? Right. Yeah. That's literally my entire genesis. This is, this is like, just go, just do it and you'll figure it out as you go. And then you can make something great out of it. Yeah. It, any other, uh, Shameless plugs. I mean, you guys are, are Pearl and Innovative, correct? Any other sponsors? Yeah, Pearl Innovative for Mystique. It's uh, Adams Pearl Innovative, uh, Zildjian Evans, and uh, Synced Up Design. And then for Colts, it's Yamaha, Remo, Sabian, Innovative, and uh, Remo. Awesome. All right. That. Well, we are looking we are looking for what's that so thanks for having me on oh for sure no thank you and uh i know uh, i could probably speak for george we're really looking forward to that mystique show reveal Mm -hmm. whenever it happens to see what kind of mystique show we're going to get this year yeah is it going to be the uh the scary kind or the uh provocative or or what we shall see soon yeah Yeah. absolutely yeah we're coming we're coming down that pipeline to to hear that info pretty soon all right Y'all have a good one, and I appreciate you. All right, and uh, thanks everybody for tuning in, and we will see you hopefully not too much, not not too long in between episodes here in, on the Drum Corps Coffee Shop Podcast. Good night, everybody. Good night.